Hello, from the team at Packet Fabric, welcome. You're here either because you signed up for a review only demo account or you wish to. To sign up, go to Packet Fabric, Technology, View Demo Account. But who are we? Well, Packet Fabric is the multi cloud network as a service company. We're bringing the same economics and ease of use that cloud brought to compute and storage to networking. Build a private network in minutes with speeds up to 100 gig and soon more between any of our locations globally. Only pay for what you use and we give you the ability via API or UI to completely control your connectivity. And our network is inherently secure because it's private. To achieve this, the network consists of our own layer two transport lighting our fiber optic network, all controlled by our proprietary SDN controller. And with these two things, we're able to achieve the massive scale of terabits of switching capacity globally our customers enjoy every day between their sites and also cloud service providers. So let's take a quick tour of the sample network topology we built for you in the view demo account. The topology deployed in the view demo consists of four sites, Chicago, New York, San Francisco, and Atlanta, each with its own port on packet fabric. The simplest service is our bundled point to point service shown between San Francisco and Atlanta. This allows for the provisioning of two ports and a connection between them as a single action. Simply choose which ports and the speed and we do the rest in minutes. We also offer multi cloud connectivity options to a large number of cloud service providers here showing the current top three. What's important to note is that Chicago, by virtue of having a port on the fabric, can now unlock a whole slew of functionality, such as the ability to have multiple connections to all the cloud service providers and route between them over our fabric, as well as the massive cost savings that entails. Connectivity to other enterprise sites on packet fabric, such as New York, shown here, as well as connectivity to our entire ecosystem located on our marketplace, which we'll explore in the portal. So without further ado, let's have a look. Log into the dashboard using the credentials sent to you for the view demo account. The dashboard gives an overview of the packet fabric services you've provisioned, or more the point we have for you in this view demo. And let's start by clicking through our interfaces. You can interact with interfaces using the per interface menu. I do want to touch briefly on the letter of authorization. Uh, this document I'm showing here is Generate LOA allows you to connect to Packet Fabric at a co-location facility. Uh, the details aren't really all that important, but what is, is that in a typical carrier, it can take 90 days in order to generate this document. I think we just generated it in seconds. That's a huge time saving for you. But getting back to here, if we were to select view, there's a whole bunch of details here that we could go through as long as a bunch of contextual menus, but what's it all mean? What a great question. And it's really easy to find out with Packet Fabric. Just go to our main website, resources and knowledge base. And then we can click on interfaces. Okay, that was pretty simple. Um, okay, well, let's start with creator ports and get a bit of context about what that's about. And then we can go back and have a look at the specific information. So in terms of creating interfaces, interfaces can be either a single port or a group of ports known as a lag. Now let's have a look at a single port. Uh, provisioning a port is the first step towards building your network. And we also try and be very clear and upfront with uh, when you actually will be built. So if you create a port by accident, uh, you've got about 24 hours to delete it. And moving forward, uh, tip to create a single port, choose that option, our location and our details. And we can choose things like the speed, no auto negation, uh, auto negotiation. And when we say details for optics, we do mean details, but here's an important one and that's availability zones. So availability zones to us are completely diverse hardware stacks. Every single component that goes into building the service is duplicated at our co-location facilities. So not just ports or line cards, the entire chassis as well as out of band uh, management components. Uh, we can also find a bit of information about the uh, port and you can write in a description and billing and term selection. We actually uh, offer billing terms from 12 months out, uh, month to month out to 36 months, uh, as well as the ability to have different billing entities. So that can be used for chargeback. But having created a port, you can then have a look at the port information. And this should look very familiar with the screen we just showed you. We went from view port, we could see all the port information, what state it was in, um, its location and building status. 
Uh, this is the diagram that you probably remember from the screen. We'll get back to in a second. But you can see all the different explanations of everything, even including the network elements that we use to build our network and their naming the conventions that we adopt as well. So uh, we're very transparent and uh, there's a lot of great information here about exactly how our ports work. The statistics, traffic metrics, we offer bits per second packets, unicast packets, as well as the well, standard bump traffic, uh, error metrics, all the way out to things like runts and aged and discards, and even optic information, such as the module temperature and transmit receive power. And all these are offered over time scales down to a minute, out to 12 months. We even give you access to rattle logs pertinent to your interface so that you can tell uh, exactly what's going on if it was an internal event that caused some kind of weirdness on your network or if it's something you need to investigate further yourself. And it's a huge time saver for troubleshooting. We also show the history of everything that happened to the port as well as all the documents that get generated. And this is very important as well. This is not just the service order, but any change orders, requests to delete, etc. So our documentation is incredibly comprehensive on how to create and manage ports. Just to verify, here's statistics, errors, our time frames, and to get sub one hour, we actually offer that via the API, rattle logs, history. So let's say we've created our interfaces and now we want to create a virtual circuit in between them. So uh, let's look at the virtual circuit we've already created. What's there really to say about virtual circuits? Well, as it turns out, quite a lot. Uh, we can have a look at this page, which is going to show all the details about the virtual circuit, as well as the ports that make up either end of it and the contextual menu. But uh, if you want to know anything about the, anything on the virtual circuit side of things, have a look at the virtual circuit details in our documentation. You can see everything I just showed you there explained in great detail. All the members that make up the ports, the statistics that you'll see on the contextual menu, the long haul usage, as well as history and documents. Now, how do you create a virtual circuit? Well, let's have a look first at the different sorts of virtual circuits that we provide. The most common one, the one I'll show you today, is the backbone virtual circuit. But we do offer three other types. Uh, we have a comprehensive ecosystem known as our marketplace. And once you're on the fabric, you can connect to any of those third party uh, ecosystem members via a virtual circuit. It's really that easy. And I'll be getting into that in a little bit uh, later on in the, the uh, video. In terms of uh, we, as I said before, we are a layer two network and we're not connected to the internet, but we understand that you need to. So we can connect virtual circuits to part of our ecosystem internet exchange providers. And most importantly, I would say, is we do offer a range of host or cloud service provider connections, and we offer both hosted and dedicated. Hosted is the simplest, dedicated is the most uh, powerful. Uh, and for each of these things, we're going to go and dig into a lot of the great documentation that we have on it. Okay, but let's have a look at creating a virtual circuit because that's the bit you can't do on the view only demo. So we would select backbone from that uh, contextual menu. Then you choose the ports that you want to make up the virtual circuit. And then you select the pricing plan. So let's just say the ports have a 36 month term because they do, <laughs> but you only want a VC that goes month to month. So we totally support that. And we also support two different pricing models. You can either pay for the bandwidth, which is dedicated, or you can pay for the bytes, which is usage. Then you can set your VC description and parameters, and it's pretty simple. Uh, click and voila, you have your VC. You'll be able to see all these statistics as well, the bits per second, packets per second. We can see the long haul usage. There's no data currently on this one, but we'll be adding that soon. History, as well as documents. Okay, and the learn max across this. And again, because this is a home, uh, the read only demo, when I actually have endpoints configured. You may recall that a point to point service is two interfaces and a virtual circuit in between them. So by virtue of it being two interfaces, we still have the letter of authorization uh, issues to deal with, but it's no issue with packet fabric because it's two ports or two interfaces, we can generate two LOAs at the same time. You can give different contact information for either end, select one or either or none, or also email as an attachment. Now, again, 
our details page, everything here is incredibly well documented in our knowledge base. And in fact, to the point that because a point to point connection is essentially two ports connected by a single VC, the details page comprises a combination of the same information you would find on the port details page and virtual circuit details page. Our documentation is simply excellent. Anything I could possibly tell you is here already. So as we go through, you can see all the different details that you'd expect to see on the connection details pages. But uh, to get an overview of the specs, let's call out the fact that we do use uh, Ethernet private line. It is a single, it is a pseudo wire. So uh, it have a whole lot of technical notes about uh, EPLs and pseudo wire, but we'll call out one thing that's very important with Packet Fabric, and that's our pricing. And we are absolutely transparent about our pricing. We show everything about our pricing on the public website. You don't need to be a customer to see this. Uh, I'm showing the point to point, but this is true for every single service that we offer. You can see here that as you change your service term, you can see the appropriate discount get applied. You can have a look at uh, different markets, say uh, US to UK and US to Australia. This is showing metro pricing. That's uh, more of a, when things are in the same geographic region, say New York to New York or Chicago to Chicago. But then we also uh, will show you the long haul pricing when you want to go in between those centers. What would it cost? Again, very transparent pricing, very upfront, very open. Uh, let's have a look at creating a connection. So in creating a connection, you'd select the point to point icon and it's the same steps uh, as you do for the interfaces and the uh, VC, except the VC is bundled in, it's going to use the port speed. So there's a few steps you can cut out. So we'll select the port location and the details, optic details again that you'd expect to, so you can connect to the other end, know what uh, optics you need to connect to the other side. And again, this notion of availability zones. And to repeat, that's complete redundancy. It's redundant uh, every single component that is required to make up the service, not just ports or line cards or chassis, but everything. And we repeat for the other end, and then you just confirm it because you're going to use the entire port as the VC speed. And so your next steps would be to generate the LOA, which I showed you before. And it really is as simple as that. Time to look at cloud connectivity. In this instance, we've got connections to Google, Azure, and AWS. Um, and why would you possibly want to do this with Packet Fabric? Well, that's a great question too. Uh, so remember, Packet Fabric is a private, secure layer two network of high speed connections directly into what they called uh, on ramp locations, which are connections that uh, can join onto the cloud service provider's own backbones uh, away from the internet. And so that's one major reason is uh, security and performance. Uh, the other reason though is uh, cost. So uh, I think it's reasonable as a, we have far more detailed calculators for this, but as a rule of thumb to egress out of a CSP or cloud service provider is on the order of about eight to 10 cents a, a megabyte. Uh, and with packet fabric, it's about two cents a megabyte. So straight away, you can see there's a heck of a lot of savings there. So how do you achieve this? Well, we can have a look at details here and you're going to see a similar kind of page you've seen for all of our services, it's nice and consistent. You can also actually get into each of the CSPs or cloud service providers portals from each of the details pages, but really nothing beats the documentation for explaining all this. It tells you very explicitly, you must have a port in order to use either of these hosted or dedicated um, offerings. And I said before, hosted was easiest, but dedicated was more powerful. Well, here's the explanation as to why that is. So with hosted, we're actually using and sharing. We supply the port to that cloud on ramp. And so you will get a VLAN on that port with other people, right? And so pros and cons for that. Now it's obviously isolated and secure and we do bandwidth uh, rate limiting. But if you want uh, the greater flexibility that a dedicated uh, connection can provide, it comes with a little bit more responsibility, more power, more responsibility. You need to provide the cross connect, all that sort of thing. So what I would advise you to do is to have a look at getting started with hosted. We do offer speeds from 50 meg up to 10 gig. And then with dedicated, you know, there may be this reasons for that. Um, and here you see a wonderful comparison in our docs that explains exactly uh, the difference between each of those. But uh, in terms of the documentation, how to update and create managed virtual circuits for dedicated cloud connections. This is when we're getting to the more advanced side of things. But if I was to guide you, I'd say, let's start uh, with the hosted connection uh, on a CSP. So how do I do that? Well, it gives you all the prerequisites. You're going to want your account settings. Um, by giving us your AWS, in this instance, account, um, 
you're not giving us the accounts, just the account ID, we're able to then uh, create a connection uh, on your behalf into your uh, AWS account, but uh, nothing else happens until you go in and accept it. So it's very secure and very safe. It's just us doing a lot of work on your behalf. But here you can choose information about your on-ramp. And there's actually another video that I've done on hybrid cloud connectivity on our YouTube channel that I'd recommend you go have a look at and on the specifics of how to actually provision this stuff. And I'll put a link to that in the description below. But if you want to see uh, the Google Cloud Platform, uh, here's an example of the process overview. It'll walk you through all the steps you need to do on both sides, not just on the Packet Fabric side. That We understand that uh, with cloud connectivity, each of the CSPs does it a little bit differently. So we make sure we give you enough information that you can go and confidently provision both sides. We're not going to leave you hanging. That's the key thing with Packet Fabric. We're always here to help you, and our documentation is very comprehensive. And if that doesn't work, please, you can always reach out to our customer support team anytime for help. I do want to talk a little bit now about uh, our marketplace offering, which is our ecosystem. And it is in beta. Uh, here you can see that we offer. Uh, here's the uh, 26 providers currently, but growing, but we do break it down by category so you can filter um, bare metal hosting, cloud computing, uh, content delivery, data storage, developer platforms, edge computing, Internet of Things, ISPs, private connectivity, SD-WAN, security, video conferencing, voice and messaging, and web hosting partners, as well as by location, so you can even filter by your shared co-location space. But again, I wouldn't be doing it justice. All I could do is basically go to browse the marketplace in our documentation. It'll tell you everything you need to know about our ecosystem, as well as how to get your own company onto the marketplace. And that can be covered in admin. So when you're administrating uh, your own account or your own you know, portal account, uh, you can actually self-select whether you want to make the company searchable. You can also say whether you want to use multi-factor authentication. And how might I find out more about how to turn on multi-factor authentication? Well, here. So again, please leverage our documentation. You may be getting a hint. It's quite wonderful. And it will tell you everything that you could possibly ever want to know. And it is just a few clicks away. If at any point you feel you need to speak to someone, by all means, contact us, select support. You can either email or call us. And if you'd like to create your own account so you don't have to use just the read only version, there's instructions on how to do that too, again, in our documentation. All the information you could ever possibly need to get started with Packet Fabric is right here. And if you'd like to see who the team is, let's start with the wonderful person who wrote nearly all this documentation, Caitlin Wheelis, as well as the rest of the team who makes all this magic happen. So on behalf of them to you, thank you very much for joining us at Packet Fabric. We can't wait to see you on the fabric. <laughs>